Hey everyone, and welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at Cinemachine, what it does, and how we can use it. So, basically, Cinemachine allows us to create uh, much more complex camera movements, tracking, uh, following around targets, and overall create uh, nice cinematic camera movements and angles, okay, that would uh, rather be quite hard to do without it, um, you know, in code or in animation. So Cinemachine just allows us to drag and drop components and make it quite easy and quick. So how do we begin? Well, uh, we already installed the Cinemachine uh, package from the package manager earlier on. So make sure you have this Cinemachine selection at the top of the screen. And then once you do, you want to click on Cinemachine and then go create virtual camera. Now, a few things happened. First of all, we have this brand new game object that got created called CMVCam1. And if we look at our main camera over here in the hierarchy, you'll see there's a little icon next to it. Now, if we click on main camera, you'll see that we have our camera component, we have our audio listener, but then we also have a brand new Cinemachine brain component. And this component is just what we attach to a camera um, in order to actually utilize it with the Cinemachine um, system, okay? So we don't actually really have to modify anything here. Um, this is all specific stuff if you want to change the update method, uh, blending method and all that, but generally we can just uh, close it up like so as we don't need to touch any of those components. So let's go over to the CMVCam1, and this, as you can see, has a Cinemachine virtual camera component, and this is what defines uh, sort of the properties and the actions of this specific camera, okay? Because with Cinemachine, you can have as many virtual cameras as you want, and then we can choose to toggle between them as we wish, okay? So, for example, here in the inspector, um, what we can do, first of all, is we can choose to say, okay, I want you to follow this and I want you to look at this, okay? So we can choose to follow a target and look at a target, and then we can modify those properties down here. So we can modify how closely it uh, follows the target with some offset, some dampening. Um, we can then choose the aim settings. For example, um, do we want to look at a bit of an offset? Do we want to have a nice smooth aim? Um, and we can change a few other things as well, such as adding in noise and even some extensions here. So let's just say um, we have this ship currently, uh, you know, sailing around. Let's just say we want our camera to stay where it is right now, but look at the ship as it sails around. Well, in that case, what we need to do is drag our ship into the look at uh, property right here. And as you can see, our camera has changed. First of all, the camera has rotated to snap onto the ship's position. Now the ship position originally is at its base, so that's why we are looking towards the water here. Um, and you'll notice there is this sort of uh, box right here. This basically defines uh, the range at which the camera is going to sort of freely move, okay? Because we can define if it is a nice rigid look at, so we're always looking at the exact position, or if it's a bit more natural and smooth, as if the, as if the camera is sort of tracking to keep up with the ship. And we could, of course, modify all these properties. So let's just leave it as is right now and press play to see how it goes. So as you can see, the ship goes off and we are rotating to face the camera, okay? That was nice and easy, no code required at all. Um, we can, of course, modify a few properties. If we go to our um, CMVCam1, let's actually rename this one to uh, Track Camera. And if we go down to the aim settings right here, um, we can change a few things. First of all, let's actually look at the ship um, a bit up more because right now we're looking a bit low. So where we have tracked object offset, we can raise this Y value a bit. And as you can see, we are now looking um, a bit above the uh, ship's position. So there we go. Uh, we also have look ahead time and watch what happens if I increase this look ahead time and press play. As you can see, um, the camera is predicting where this ship is going to be. So we're actually looking ahead of the ship. Now that can be useful in many cases. Um, if you want a camera sort of looking ahead to see where an object's going, it can be useful in those instances. And we have look ahead smoothing. Now, as you can see, when we press play, it was quite rigid, okay? We're sort of snapping between the look ahead positions. Whereas if we increase the smoothing, as you can see, when we press play, it's gonna be a nice smooth transition between those points. 
We can change it on the fly as well. So we can increase the smoothing and decrease it as we're playing. Now, uh, if you do want to modify those properties, uh, we probably don't want look ahead time. So we'll bring that back down to zero. Um, we also have the dampening. Now damping is basically adding smoothness to the camera movement, okay? As you can see, if I bring the damping down to zero on the horizontal and vertical axes and press play, uh, you'll see that we are basically stuck to this specific location on the ship, okay? It's like in code, we we're just telling the camera to look at this position on the ship and stay there every single frame. Um, but what if we want a bit of, you know, natural movement, you know, as if there is actually a guy behind the camera sort of rotating it as the ship is moving. Well, that's when we can add in some damping. So we can increase these values a bit. Um, probably don't want to make it too high, otherwise the camera will take forever to catch up, especially if it's a fast moving object. And as you can see, the camera is now trying to keep up with the new position that we are trying to track. As you can see, this um, there's like a tiny little yellow square right here and that is the position the camera is trying to get to um, and over time based on the damping and other settings um, it will get there so i'm going to bring this back down to let's just say one uh, to make it nice uh, not too rigid but not too smooth and then we have screen x and screen y and what this does is it kind of adds an offset to where we are looking or an offset to the screen so as you can see if i modify it here on the X, you'll see the camera is sort of rotating left and right, and on the Y, it rotates up and down, okay? Now, this may be useful, but uh, we're probably gonna leave that at zero for now. Next up, we have our dead zone, okay? Now, the dead zone is basically the area of the screen that we are not gonna track our object, okay? And as you can see, if I increase the width and increase the height, you'll see there is this uh, box that appears in the middle of the screen, okay? It's not blue and it's not red, it's sort of the transparent box. And if our point of reference right here, this yellow uh, square that we're trying to track, if this is within this box right here, then we are not going to track our object. So watch what happens when I press play. You'll notice that as long as this ship is within this box right here, it will not track it, only when it leaves it, okay? So we can press play, and as you can see, now we start tracking it once it is outside of our dead zone. Now this can be useful of course in a game where you want the player to have uh, the freedom of moving around but you don't want the camera always stuck on them, okay? Uh, maybe you only want to start tracking them once they go off to the side of the screen. Um, we don't really want this so we're gonna bring the dead zone back down to zero so it's always tracking our ship. And then we have our soft zone width and soft zone height. Now soft zone uh, is basically um, the area of the screen which allows us for this smooth transition, okay? And this is basically this uh, blue square here in the middle. So if our point ever goes over to the red side of the screen, it's basically going to stop right there, okay? So um, once we reach that point, we're just gonna snap onto our position. And that's so that the object doesn't get too far off screen. Um, it's always gonna be on screen. Bias X and bias Y basically uh, translates those changes and those zones uh, horizontally and vertically like so. And center on active basically uh, decides whether or not we're going to snap to our ship when we start the game or when the camera is initialized. So that is how we can set up a Cinemachine virtual camera to start tracking and looking at an object as we move around in 3D space, okay? Uh, in the next lesson, we are going to be looking at following our target because right now we have the camera looking at the target as it goes around the rock right here. We've looked for all these settings here. Uh, next lesson, we're going to look at how we can actually attach this object, attach this uh, camera to the ship, uh, maybe as if there's a cameraman on the ship bobbing with the ship as it goes. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be continuing on with looking at our Cinemachine virtual camera. So in the previous lesson, we looked at how we can actually look at an object over time. Okay, so we're having our camera rotate towards this ship with a bit of an offset, with a bit of damping. Now, how do we actually get it to track the ship? Okay, how do we get it to actually follow the ship? Well, for this, we are actually going to remove our look at reference right here. So let's just set this look at to none. So if we press play, you'll see that our virtual camera isn't doing anything right now. And let's get it to start actually following our ship. So I'm going to drag ship into the follow property right here. And straight away, you can see that 
we've got a bit of a problem, okay? Um, basically, if we go to the scene view, what's happened here is that the camera has sort of snapped over to the uh, position of the ship. Now, of course, if we open up body right here, we can add an offset so we can increase the Y a bit here. Um, let's actually set our rotation to zero, zero. So it is fa oh, zero on the X and 180 on the Y. So it's facing forward like so in the game view. Uh, we can then go ahead and add in some offset right here. So maybe we want it, uh, we'll just modify this a bit, a bit behind the ship, a bit to the left. So the camera is sort of on the left back side of the ship like so. We can even modify it a bit more. Okay, there we go. Maybe even about a, add a bit of rotation. Really, it's up to you. Uh, now, when we press play, we can have it follow the ship like so. Okay, so you may notice that our ship or our camera doesn't actually look at anything as the camera uh, moves around, as the ship moves around. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to set the look at here to not be the ship, but to be the stone right here, okay? So it's going to look at the stone as the ship moves around, okay? We can change the offset of this a bit here, so we are looking... Um, whoops, so we are looking at the stone position, move this over a bit like so. Um, we can then move the camera um, back a bit. So I'm going to get our camera. I'm going to move it about over, let's just say about here. Press play and look what happens. So as our ship moves, we are tracking the stone like so. Okay, so it has this sort of a maybe cinematic move. Maybe if the ship is circling around an object that it wants to focus on. For example, if we're having a ship fighting uh, cutscene, we can have the camera tracking one ship while looking at its target. Uh, we can also then go ahead and maybe increase the follow Y offset like so, press play again. So yeah, have a play around with these settings. Um, there's lots of different things that you can modify and add. Um, now let's also have a look at the lenses up here, okay? Lens basically defines, um, uh, we can define our field of view. So if we want a shallower depth of field, if we want to make it a bit more cinematic, we can make it around 40 maybe. Uh, we can change our near and far clip planes, probably don't need to modify these, as well as, as our Dutch angle, which rotates the screen uh, left and right like so. Okay, so we can have a lower field of view to maybe make it a bit, look a bit more like a, um, a cinematic camera, like so. We have the camera in the foreground, uh, rock in the background, and in fact, we can probably move our camera back a bit here, so we can add a position offset of Z a bit more, something maybe like so. Okay, we can press play again, see how that looks. And yep, there you go. So there's a wide range of different camera moves and different things that you can do here. Um, you can have objects tracking, you can have objects moving over time. Um, there's also a large number of different cameras that you can create. Right now, we've just looked at a virtual camera. Uh, there's also a dolly camera with track, which basically allows you to animate a camera um, to move along a predefined track. So if you maybe have some characters walking through a hallway or you have um, some sort of thing you want to track, but along a certain path, you can set that up. Um, Cinemachine is quite an expansive package with so many different things. So I highly recommend that you just jump in, explore, um, and just get creative. So in the next lesson, we are going to be looking at Unity's timeline, okay, and how we can start stitching together uh, various different virtual cameras in order to create some sort of a cutscene, okay, cutting between different camera angles. Uh, we might have this one, we might have a camera on top of the rock, we might have a wide angle camera that is just looking at the entire scene, and we'll just be seeing how we can cut between those as well as doing some other stuff with the timeline as well. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you all in the next lesson.